This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being. Being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. <laughs> Life is a precious, priceless gift. As incredible as this miracle is, it is also delicate and fragile. We are vulnerable regardless of how much money is in our bank account, the amount on the price tag of the jewelry we wear, the model of car we drive, or the size of the house we live in. We can lose it all and more in the blink of an eye. That is why we should enjoy life to the fullest every day. Our purpose is to discover the niche created especially for us, to sharpen our skills and abilities and fulfill our purpose. Valerie Atelis interviews Maria Trusa, the author of I Say No More, Raise Your Voice and Rewrite Your Life. Maria Trusa is also the founder of the social movement with the same name, which helps victims of sexual abuse. Born in the Dominican Republic, Maria is the CEO of Forme Medical Center and Urgent Care, located in Westchester, New York. Forme offers health services and dignified care to the vulnerable Hispanic community, especially those who do not have the ability to pay for insurance or lack immigration status. Maria is the mother of three children, Franco, Jeffrey, and Natasha. Her most recent achievements include completing the New York City Marathon, numerous business awards, and national and international conferences. Meet Maria at mariatrusa.org and yodigonomas.com. Here is the interview with Maria Trusa. In your own words, who is Maria Trusa? Maria Trusa, before anything, she is a woman that have found a mission of impacting lives. The life that, uh, the first I started with my children's life. So I am a mother of three. I have a 37 year old, 31 and a 19 year old daughter. And uh, I say the biggest um, job that I've done in my life is of being a mother. So I am a mother. I am a, a CEO, uh, a partner at a medical center that dedicates a lot of the work to the underserved community. Some, someone that has had a lot of experience in healthcare and now has a huge purpose of helping the underserved. I'm a writer and I am a woman that have found this piece that I just want to share it with the world before I go. Fundamentally, what does it take to find that piece that you have found? Interesting you ask, because my daughter, my 13-year-old daughter, asked me this week, she mm -hmm. said, Mom, how do I get to where you are. <laughs> yeah. And I was yeah, like, she's beautiful. like, I, you have this happiness in mm -hmm. no matter what, I know we go through a lot. And even the two of us and you know, I have my, my son's wife has cancer and I, I'm dealing with a lot, but no matter what life has been bringing me, I got to a place where the centeredness of my body uh, it's it's really, it's like a temple that it just does not break. And it takes a lot to get here. Uh, but I told her, I said, Natasha, what you have to do is, number one, you have to believe that you will get there. And then number two is on a daily basis, you work at it. You do work on yourself. You decide at some point that, you're going to make sure that every single day 
you're doing something to improve your life. Mm-hmm. In cumulative, those daily deposits, it's like it making an investment right. in the stock market. Cumulatively, you invest every day, you're going to be able to have a lot at the end. Mm-hmm. And for me, it's, it's just those daily deposits, daily deposits. If we all could come to this place, this space of of knowing what it takes, what it, it needs to happen in order to get there, not as a destination, but it's almost like a birthright, isn't it? To be here in a human body and enjoy the ride, enjoy this journey, isn't it? You know, Valeria, I say we are born in this space. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We are, yeah. we go through life, we're born, and then we are born into an environment that can break us or make us, into parents that can make us or break us. Right. But we are born in the peace mm-hmm. of the div- divinity. Mm-hmm. And so the idea is that we can, we are born and then we uh, get, you know, broken uh, by our past and then we go back into trying to find the peace that we are born with because it's it's a divine right and it's hard it's hard but it's hard work worth doing and if you did if you decide in your life at some point, there's catalysts, and I talk about this in my book a lot, about those catalysts, I call them in Spanish, aceleradores, yeah. accelerators that can push you a little more, a little more. So the steps that you're taking will be bigger and bigger and bigger. But at the beginning, you just have to keep moving and, and trust that the, the life is that you're going to find the way and not have the faith that you will find the peace. I, I tell my daughter how I feel so good about the fact that she is 13 and she is somebody that brainstorms. But she's always asking me like uh, questions about my past. And she knows about, you know, she is very involved in the social movement yeah. and she loves what I stand for. And to have a daughter that at the age of 13 admires you so much, because my boys <laughs> admire me. I said to her, you know, mm-hmm. you actually are very lucky because I know this piece that you see and you feel with mm-hmm. me is a piece that you are going to obtain mm-hmm. so much faster than me. Mm. And that's my goal in life. You know, I want to be able to share the tools that I've used in my life to get to the place that I am now, because this place is heaven on earth. It might be also transmission, right, Maria? Because you're there already and that can be felt. So that resonates with your daughter and people around you. And that might facilitate that paradoxically, finding what we never lost, right? It's always here anyway. It's always there. That is true. It's, I think it's a feeling, isn't it? It's a feeling that we have lost something. And then and there's, a, there's another feeling that we must find what we have lost. But in truth, nothing was ever lost because we were born whole and we would die whole. And I, I don't even believe in death, so... Yeah, I I don't either. I, you know, people, I was joking with my business partner because she turned 60 and and something happened to her and she went through this uh, transformation, but not in a good way. She started thinking a lot about death, death, death. (laughs) And I said to her, I joke, I joked around. I said, listen, it must be so good over there. Nobody <laughs> wants to go back. Oh, right. right. <laughs> true. <laughs> and I do believe. So true. I do believe that, you know, <laughs> it, there is there is something out there. I don't fear death. I what right. I what I think in my mind is like right now, my daughter is needs me. My 13-year-old daughter needs me. So I want to make sure that, you know, I I would be afraid to go because of her. But I'm not afraid to go for 
the unknown. I I used to be. I used to be. And that's something that I, I think we all go through that. And at some point, maybe it changes. I don't know. But for me, at this point, I've lived such an amazing yeah. life. Yeah. <laughs> and I feel that for me to be able to get to where I got in mm. so many, in the so many, I call them pillars of my life. Yeah. Uh, going through what I've gone through in my life and then being able to have the five pillars that I call, which is my body, which is my temple. I love my body. And to be able to say that when you come from a trauma like I did, yeah. it's it's really a major accomplishment to say, yeah. I love my body. My True. body is my temple. And I'm always exploring because I know that that temple is capable of doing so much. Like today, I ran, I went on my cycling ride because mm-hmm. I'm training for an Ironman oh, in, wow. on the 26th <laughs> of September. And wow. after I was done with the 40, my one of my longest run and in, in by the ride, by the way, I've never done cycling. And that's how I challenged that temple of my body. So I got into cycling and it was extremely hard at the beginning. I felt there was, that was no joke. And I kept going and I kept going. And today when I finished my ride, I start, I broke down in tears of happiness Mm -hmm. and pride. And I said, I am writing with this younger girl. She's 35. And she said to me, you know, a mile 35, I wanted to give up, but I saw you going and you're a beast. And she's like, I couldn't, I couldn't stop because of you. And she says, how do you do this? And I said, you know what? I keep going. I is it's through repetition in commitment, Mm. repetition in commitment. And you keep going and going and going. And every day you just decide to keep going and going and going and going until the going becomes a habit and the habit becomes a form of life. How do you define true power these days? True power is being able to be fully authentic, being yourself and not being afraid to be judged. Understanding that, you know, when I wrote my book, uh, some people, I remember being interviewed and, and this uh, lady asked me, is there anything I should, should not go into? And I said, I am, my life is truly, truly an open book. There is um, nothing that I would hide. I really, in my book, I said all. I said it all: the good, the bad, the ugly, the things that I wasn't proud of, but they were part of my life. They were the mistakes that got me to the next level. They were the mistakes that you know became my the the eye opener to to be able to create a different life. And even those I shared, and I shared them because we all could be judged. We are all broken souls trying to be less broken. Mm. So anyone that is uh, looking at me and judging, I'm okay with that. Mm. I truly am. And the ability to be authentic, just be who you truly are and not be afraid to say the wrong things. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I remember when I, even as I'm doing my show for the, uh, the social movement, uh, Yo Digo No Mas, um, I have a talk show. And yeah. in the show, my team is correcting me a lot. And I said, listen, I don't want to be perfect because I'm not. And right. I am not a journalist. I didn't go to school right. to be, you know, a journalist <laughs> or to be an anchor. I am doing divine work here. And I'm okay if I make little mistakes here and there because the power on being authentic is endless. 
that shows the true realization of who we are, right? Invulnerability, which is the, the journey in the human body, isn't it? The body is breakable. The feelings can be devastating. And why not embrace that too? I broke, uh, I was engaged and I broke my engagement and I did a pod, I, I have a little podcast. I, my reflections, I do that every day, Monday through Friday usually. And I remember when I shared the engagement and everybody was so happy for me. And then I just shared that it didn't work. And I, everybody, I was getting messages like, thank you so much for sharing the way you shared and I was fully authentic that even my my ex boy fiance actually sent me a text and he's like, I you did that with such a class. I just want to say thank you. But I was fully authentic and vulnerable because that's what connects humanity. Yeah. But we try to be something we're not, and we try to to hide our vulnerability, and then we really lose out on connections. What is true love to you? True love is really loving who you are, loving yourself. You, you know, people talk about mm. this like it's a cliche, you know, or you, you, how do you love when you are not able to love yourself? Um, I, I understand that because I got to tell you that I did not love myself. I hated myself. I hated who I was, I hated my body. I hated myself as a mother when I first had my child, my firstborn. And then I started to love myself through the daily work and showing, like I said to you, yeah, over yeah. and over and over. Yeah. So when you're able to really get to a place where you truly love yourself, then you see the love on other people. You see that kindness, uh, my core values are love, kindness, and respect. And I have that for myself first. So when I broke up with my fiance, I felt that those values were being broken. And I said, if I don't love, if I don't keep my core values, then how do I execute those values on other people? So it really falls on loving yourself, because if you love yourself and truly love yourself with authentically mm. and vulnerable, then it is so easy to love. I love people. Oh, yeah. I, I love uh -huh. so much. My heart is mm. so big and it's such a blessing to be able to feel the love for so many people in the world. And my last warm-up question is about healing. What is healing? Is there a destination for healing? And what are some of the misconceptions about healing? So healing for me is starts because it's a process. Yeah. Healing is not something that there is one formula. There, it is a process. But for me, started for, with forgiveness. Mm, yeah. I forgave my father. And I, I have to say that it wasn't like I went looking for it. It just came to me. My, my father was dying in, my, in the Dominican Republic. And my uncle called me and said, uh, your father is dying. I have not spoken to my father since I was nine years old. And it's in my book, and we'll talk about that. Yeah. But when my father, he told me that my father couldn't speak, my father wrote, that was the only way he could communicate because he had a brain tumor. And my father wrote his last, his last request was that he needed to hear my forgiveness before he would leave. Right. And my uncle called me and it was, I struggled with letting it go, but I asked for help. I said, God, please help me. I, I was in my 20s. Uh, I just had a son. And I asked, I said, if I forgive my father, that means that I have to let him go and I have to mean it. 
I could not just say that I forgave him. Right. In Valeria, yeah. the, the beginning of my healing was when five minutes later, I get a call from my uncle and he said, thank you. We all thank you. He waited for your forgiveness and as soon as he heard it, oh, wow. tears went down his eyes and mm. he passed. Right. And, and I say in the book, yeah. I dedicated part of the book to my father because if it wasn't for that moment, he gave me the gift of forgiveness. Yeah. It's still like when, when I was saying about healing, um, I don't think we heal completely. I think uh, we get to a place where we are at peace with our lives. But look, I'm crying right now. I'm remembering that story and it doesn't hurt. But at the same time, you know, it's it brings emotions that there is love, there is happiness, but there's pain. So the healing is is something that I think we will continue to go through the journey of life. There would always be things that will come your way mm. that would need healing. So, but uh, getting to this, the forgiveness for me is the biggest way to start the healing process. And I often think about forgiveness and um Who do we need to forgive first, ourselves or the person or someone else who has done something to hurt us or that has hurt us? I wonder what comes first. I I think it's um, different for everyone. For me, uh, it actually started forgiving my father and then I forgave myself. And I said to myself, wow, all these years, I was so angry at my father and it took that moment for that anger to go away. I I had to forgive myself for hurting myself for all those years. And I did. Yeah, that's exactly what I was referring to. We had the pain that we have cultivated within ourselves in our hearts um, for all, all this time. It has been my case too. It's interesting for most of us, that's the first step to healing, forgiveness. That's so true. What is your understanding about God, life itself, and the purpose of the human experience? I think we are all, we come with a purpose. Yeah. I, I truly feel that, and I think we live and we all have impacted the, the universe in different ways. Some people... Uh, get the, I I believe, and this is obviously my belief, um, that our purpose gets destroyed sometimes Mm -hmm. by the environment that we are born into or the people that are raising us. Um, You know, we are born and we don't have a subconscious. The subconscious is built as we, we are raised by the, people around us. Right, right. And I, some people like myself, I mean, I went through this horrible experience and I was able to get out of the path of destruction that I was put on. Uh, it wasn't my choice. I don't mm. think it was mm. my choice, obviously. Right. Uh, but it's, we are put on this path of destruction. And I think at some point, unfortunately not for everybody, you decide to just get off the destruction road and you move into the into the path of uh, healing and repairing. Mm-hmm. I yeah. believe that the purpose is finding that purpose that we came here to do and we get lost. We lose the purpose. It's not a simple answer, you know, because I do believe in God. I I believe that in, and believe me, I, uh, uh, when I was talking about the five pillars, one of them is the spiritual pillar that I talk about um, when I say, you know, the, the five pillars that I say is 
your relationship with your body, your family, your spirituality, finance, in fun. Mm, yeah. And yeah. I look at life and because for me, when you come from trauma, all of those things get destroyed. And it just life as it is to build those pillars is yeah. hard to do. But right. when you come from trauma, it just becomes even freaking hard. Yeah. It's so hard to fix, right. to, to build. So true. So I think, you know, God gives us what we can, what he feels we can handle. And I think at some point we have to listen if you're connected spiritually and you can be connected because I don't believe everybody needs to believe in what I believe. I believe in God, but you can believe in divinity. You can believe in the universe. You can believe in nature. At, At some point you have to reconnect with the divine the divinity in you, mm. but we, you know, life beats you up in, in, and we go with the subconscious, you know, they say 95% of our decisions are made from our subconscious. And for most of the part, when you're being built in your subconscious, your subconscious is being built. You don't have control of it. Yeah. So true. So, so oh, true. you lose control. So I, I do believe that we come here with a purpose. It's just that sometimes we lose it with life difficulties and hardship. We get distracted, my Maria. There are so many distractions, right, for that to happen. Uh, That's another interesting topic, choosing. When you say that I have not chosen, or nobody chooses really to go through horrible experiences in the body. And... And that's kind of interesting because when I think about life itself and everything that happens, it seems like we're not choosing anything. Uh, Life is just doing what it does, kind of uh, like you being life itself, going through all the experiences you went through, the hardships, the challenges, and then rising from that. That's life's way of showing that what is possible and, uh, and how magical this experience can be. And you're right, not for everyone. Sometimes it doesn't happen, which is, um, yeah, it might be the mystery, right? Why for some of us, people who go through the same challenges that you went through, that I went through, and they don't really recover, they, they uh, decide to go on the path of destruction. That is... Um, it's very sad, you know, I... And that's why I wrote my book, because I I said, if I can continue to impact people and with my story and with the tools, the, there's there are souls out there that would be inspired yeah. and they would start. I could be the catalyst. And that's what I like to do. That's what I'm doing right now. And it's so beautiful. Valeria is so beautiful. I love that work. So you wrote the book, I Say No More, Raise Your Voice and Rewrite Your Life. Talk to me about, I think you have been talking about the inspiration, not the inspiration exactly, so I'll ask that question, but the intention of writing your book. So talk to me about the inspiration and if you want to disclose some of this story, because we want the reader to read about it. Yeah. So the inspiration of the book was my son, Jeffrey. I was in Colorado uh, skiing with my children and uh, we were waiting for his brother. It was just I was taking a time just for the two with the two of them. And Jeffrey and I were waiting for Franco to come and We were having a glass of wine and Jeffrey says to me, you know, mom, you have to tell your story please write a book. He's like, I don't know a CEO of a company. I don't know anyone in my life. And he works for Accenture. He's um, went to the University of Michigan, very successful. And he says to me, I just don't know anyone that has come from your background and to ins- for you to inspire the Latino community specifically that they can too. You need to do this. So he was my inspiration to write the book. And everything, like we were talking about divinity, he put it out there. And then all the doors opened for me. I was asked 
two weeks later to be in a documentary that's supposed to come out at the end of this year in uh, Channel 13 and is is the triumph of an entrepreneur spirit in um, the Latino story. And that started. And then uh, I had to go back to my childhood. I had to go back to the Dominican Republic. I had to face you know, where I, where I was, uh, I was, you know, one of the things that I think the, your listeners should know is that my, I come from a very traumatic childhood and the way that I wrote the book is the first chapter is extremely hard to get through is I, I share very, a, a lot of details of my story. And I did it for a few reasons. Number one is I want, if anybody's thinking of raping, because the rapists come from them being raped, many of them, I wanted them to be able to see the pain that that, that was being caused. And I said, maybe sometime someone would be reading this and they would think, you know, a lot before they take action. Number two is that, yes, I you can come from that broken place. And yes, you can build your life and you can go from victim to creator. And that was my purpose. If you, the way that I did the book is purposely from the victim perspective. And then you can see how I started to create a new life. And it was, you know, to be at the age of nine years old, nine years old for your father to give you to a man to brutally rape you, to force you to drink a bottle of whiskey, which turned out to be a blessing for me, to force, to to leave me with this man. And for this man to brutally rape me the entire night to the point that he almost killed me. He almost destroyed my little body. I had to have surgery after the rape because this man broke me so brutally that he broke me apart. I guess is I know how uh, how horrible this experience in the human body can get. I mean, I have an idea because <laughs> I have been through a lot too. But uh, listening to details like that, it's so um, for some reason makes my body shake, and I'm trying to understand what it's trying to communicate. It might be shaking off the trauma that I went through too. So that's interesting. When I speak. I do a lot of speaking engagement. I'm starting to do a lot more. And I actually went back to Washington Heights because I'm from the Heights. I was born and raised in the Dominican Republic. I came here at the age of 15. I couldn't speak English. I um, It was really hard to come here. But I came to Washington Heights and I just went back to my roots and I started doing public speaking there. And I remember speaking in this theater in people crying and and shaking and I could feel their trauma as well. And I said, I speak so detailed and and vividly about it because we don't speak like this. We are used to sugarcoating sexual abuse. Sexual abuse in especially the Latino community is a major, I call it the silent Mm -hmm. pandemic. The silent pandemic my situation is not unique. It happens a lot. And we need to stop it. And the only way we stop it is, like I say, break the silence. I'm wondering why yeah, I'm responding this way. I usually try not to ask questions that will inside inspiring those answers because <laughs> I don't want to hear the details. That's not because I'm trying to sugarcoat, like you're saying, or bypass anything. Yeah, I'm wondering what it is, actually. Now you, you're actually bringing this up in a very, very real way of the feelings of not wanting to hear those things. I don't watch TV. I, I really try to 
not to put my mind and body into unsafe situations or anything that will inspire it to remember or attach to darkness, I guess. And I'm not running from darkness, but... No, I, I hear you, Valeria, because yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I don't watch, I don't watch <laughs> um, you know, TV, I don't watch news. Right, but one right. thing that I realized that uh-huh. um, because this is something that people don't want to hear, yeah. um, I have to hear it because mm. I have a social movement yeah. that where people come and tell their stories. Yeah. And the reason we specifically with this situation, we need to start speaking out because as we don't speak out and we don't get emerged into the stories, yeah. then we continue to have the vicious cycle that is destroying women, men, children Mm -hmm. throughout the world millions of people are i don't know if you know the statistics is that 93 percent of the abuse happens at home yes i have read yeah about that yes so it is you know and again i don't want to concentrate on the negativity because even with my shows i do the same thing than the book i don't want anyone to get stuck in victim mode. Mm, I don't yes. want anyone to get stuck on the darkness. Yeah. I'm all about the light. Right. All about mm, light. Although you acknowledge, yeah, the darkness in a very powerful way, in a sense of uh, even acknowledging that the darkness is that stone to lightness. We can really uh, reach that stage that you are in without going through. I guess some people, I ask that question too, is that possible to get to these realizations in life that how wonderful life is, what a miracle it is, without going through all these, uh, the challenges and darkness? Is that possible? I often ask that question, but... I think it is. Do you think that you would come to be the woman that you are today without going through the challenge that you've been through? I... You know, everybody goes through challenges. Yeah, I yeah. I tell my daughter, you know, I'm learning so much from my daughter because <laughs> my daughter has a, the most incredible life. And she says, <laughs> you know, sometimes I get angry because I have not been raped. You know, it's like mm. not that she gets angry. She's like, you are someone that is so happy and so at peace. And I have it all. I have a beautiful life. I am financially, you know, we do very well. She has this, she goes to private school. She's like, I don't have any excuses to be be this anxious. And she's an anxious child. Mm -hmm. And I say, but that is your pain. We all I don't care what you do. It's just different. Like I said, you know, we're all broken. It's just some of us are a lot more broken and have a lot more work to do. But we are all broken people that are trying to be less broken. Mm. So Mm. that's how I feel about that. Uh, That's interesting the way you interpret um, that. Hearing that, it's it's very interesting. It kind of uh, somehow it, it resonates and it doesn't at the same time because I believe that we are whole, that we are unbreakable. But uh, at that level of, of the spirit, as we call it, or the ultimate level, nothing is broken because there's nothing to break in the first place. And that's an interesting perspective that comes to me every time as truth, that we are wholeness. And everything that seems to be broken is, is just this feeling of being separated from wholeness. Because in the, in the experience of life is unconditional love. So... It embraces everything. It's everything. What seems to be broken in wholeness. So it's in a way it's divided or broken, as you call it, wholeness happening at the same time. It's it's interesting. Uh, it's a beautiful way of seeing it. And I think that I I agree with you to, uh, to a level because I think the stories, right? Yeah. We are built of stories that yeah. we create in our minds. Right, right. So... Right. Um, mm. Those stories take a take can bring us closer to our divinity, or can take us away from the divinity. But right. we are we are all divine beings. 
When I think about that, I think about unbreakable. I think about wholeness. I think about unconditional. And it might be this idea of it's a feeling that we have been broken because this and this happened to us, to the body, to the level of the mind, whatever it is. And then it's a feeling that, oh, it's I have been broken. It's a feeling only. But then I'm thinking about love, too. Is love a feeling? It might be a feeling, too. So what is all this? It might be love. <laughs> Everything's a feeling, it's seems to me. <laughs> right? So what is not a feeling? It might be uh, It might be that unconditional life, unconditional wholeness. That's not a feeling. That's the truth. That this life, whatever this is, is everything. And it might be ultimately the unknown. And it's, it's, you know, and it's so beautiful because life is so beautiful. It's we're passing through. Like if we really could get to the point where we say, look, today I open my eyes and it's a gift that I open my eyes because a lot of people are not going to open their eyes. And I, I'm going to make sure that I'm not going to have a bad day. I'm going to have bad moments. It could be bad moments throughout the day or, you know, challenging moments, but ultimately just the fact that I made it through another day is, is you're in, in the divine world, in the creation world. It's, it's the stories that we tell ourselves that lead us into non-creation or victim mode. Yes, 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 yeah. Ah, a billion times. That's it. It's that feeling. So to be here is... Um it's unimaginable. It's the unimaginable, the unacceptable. I know the unavoidable to be in a human body. So it's the miracle itself. It's incredible. And, but I know it's uh, unacceptable, isn't it, for most of us, because we want this to be somehow perfect, somehow only good, only light. Just the fact that we are in a human body, it, it embraces everything, the light and, and the dark. It has to be both. Yeah, it has to be both. Or it would not exist. We would not be here. And I can tell you, Valeria, there is not a human being that does not experience dark and light. Right. Yes. It's just some people have a lot of time in the dark and some people have a lot of time in the light. It's a balance between the dark and the light. Mm. But every single human being, yes. in my mind, yeah you know, has dark and light. Talk to me for a moment about the uh, I Say No More social movement. You have been talking about actually, but how does it work? Please describe that work for me. Yeah, so uh, Yo Digo No Mas, which means I Say No More, is uh, that is my the name of my book in Spanish. It came out of one night that I was in Vermont. I have a place in Vermont um, that I love, and I talk about it in the book. It's called Scapo. It's my escape. It is my, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Like when I go there, it's I become a little girl. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I brought some women and um, about 10 women. I like to mentor, especially Latina women. And I ended up bringing them in. We were in the jacuzzi in when I started telling them the story, I uh, was shocked to find out that eight out of the 10 were raped when they were little, yeah. when they in their uh, uh, early life. And the I, it made me, that was sort of the introduction to realize that we have a silent pandemic, especially in, in our Latino community. And then I started doing public speaking before the pandemic hit, and people were coming to me all the time. And I'm like, oh, my God, I can't understand this. And then I decided that I was going to create a social movement where we were going to tell, to know, and to unite, to tell the stories. Because we are not, nobody talks about this. This is a taboo. Yeah especially in the Latino community. Right. So that's why I created a talk show, Yo Digo No Mas, that we launched um, a few weeks ago, three weeks ago. I'm very excited about this show. And their stories with the same principle. We hear the darkness and then we see how these people got to the light. Mm, and yeah. we're sharing because I believe that if we all see that, 
listening. And then we learn from somebody that is watching the show is learning that, oh, it's not just me. Uh, this is this and this are the feelings that I had and I can identify to those feelings. And then they hear how these people started their healing process and we all share our healing tools and healing process. Then we are creating a wave true. of healing. That's true. And that's the show Yo Digo No Mas. And then to know is to be able to uh, bring up uh, psychology um, we need to educate. We need to be able to. So we've created pamphlets that where we are teaching the children to identify mm -hmm. because one of the reoccurring theme is that they don't even uh, understand what's going on. Right, right. So we want to prevent and we are creating uh, these booklets. In addition to the booklets, we are creating a curriculum to go to the schools, go to the different organizations that deal with, uh, that have, you know, what we can access children and, and family and mothers and, and fathers and educate. So that's going to be very important to educate. So it's bringing awareness, educating, and then uniting mm -hmm. with, I've done a lot of mindfulness work. I want to bring this mindfulness work through the movement to people that normally would not have access to it. It's bring mental health, have the ability to pay for people to go and go to a psychologist, uh, go to a mindfulness workshop, um, go to yoga class, go to do all the things that I've been able to do that have led me to this space that I'm in now to be able to bring it not just to the United States, but my mind in I I, I'm already, I launched a $20 million campaign and I'm going to be uh, going at it a uh, full force. And I've invested already. We became a 501c3. And my goal is to really end up being a global mm -hmm. movement yeah. that will make a major impact in the world. Uh, so many things that we can talk about, but we're almost at the end of the interview with the time. I love the tools you have in your book. There's so many inspiring ones. And let me see, there's one that I, I think was chapter two, opening the doors to my new life. You talk about, um, ask yourself what is truly important. I love that passage, a passage where you say, I think it's just right in the beginning. We need to understand that family expectations or societal norms to present ourselves in a, in a certain way or our tendency to hide behind appearances are not what truly matters in life. And this is something that most of us don't really get to understand. But then I know this is a, something that we can see as adults is easier to see. But then when you talk about children, understanding what's happening in their surroundings and being more aware of behaviors and what's happening to them, that is really powerful. If we can do that, access we the minds of children. Them. Right, right. In schools. What a beautiful a project. We have to start yeah. this in schools. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Maria. It's, yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited, uh, Valeria. Yeah. I'm yeah. so excited. I wake up every day yeah. Yeah. so excited <laughs> about the impact that we are going to make through Yo Digo No Mas. It really warms my heart every day. Uh, so many other things. I love so many chapters. Of course, chapter 11, forgive, release, restore. Beautiful chapter uh, about everything that you've been talking about during the very beginning about uh, forgiveness and how powerful that is. And uh, I love the uh, how do you define success? I think I have that as the intro of the episode that really resonated too. So many things. So <laughs> um, before I ask you my final questions, I have to go back to your book too, because the tools, um, they're very inspiring and great reminders for all of us. So before I ask you my final questions, would you like to add anything or read a passage in your book? You know, one of the things that I talk about in my book that I believe is a trans is one of the biggest transformation tool is affirmation. Yeah. You know, really, um, I I say all the time, you believe what, what a few things. Uh, what you think, what you speak, you create. Yeah. In what you can visualize. And you can believe 
you will definitely create. When you connect your thoughts with your emotions, that energy goes into the quantum field Mm. and you get exactly what you want. That formula for me is the formula of life. I visualize everything throughout my life when I started this healing process and the creation mode Mm -hmm. that I got in. It was through visualization. And really, when you can connect your mind of how you think to the feelings of your body, then you're able to create. It's there for all of us. What is another word for healing? transformation. And uh, let me see, I'll ask you this one. If you knew you would die soon, meaning leaving or losing the body, would you make any change or do anything in a different way? Ah, interesting question. I, if, I mean, I would, I can tell you that I would speed up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I would speed up at the time that I'm spending in Yo Digo No Mas. Yeah. Uh, I would I would definitely spend more time in Yo Digo No Mas um, because I know that that is where I can make the biggest impact in the world. Um, I have two businesses, uh, which is Yo Digo No Mas is a nonprofit organization. And then I have the four main medical center in urgent care. And uh, if I knew I was going to die, I actually would give up. Um, some of my power in, Jodi, in the four main medical center and, and take more time in Jodi Gonomaz. So my last question is, what are three things about life you wish everyone to know, to have or experience before they lose the body? To be able to live a life where anxiety is not dominating your day. That's number one. To be able to love you just the way you are, to be able to accept the things that are not in your control and really completely let them go. Because what is without, what is not in your control, it is not for you to put energy into. Those are the three things that I would want people to get before they die. Beautiful. Uh, As always, that word keeps coming back to me. Uh, Thank you so much for your presence, your genuine, generous, um, uh, wise presence, words and everything else in between that could be felt today um, very powerfully. Thank you, Valeria. It has been an honor for me to do this with you because, you know, I'm I'm feeling your energy and you're feeling mine and uh, they're, they're pretty in sync. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. And before we say goodbye, where can we find more information about you, your projects, books, products, services, and future projects? Yes. Um, if people um, get moved by the movement, the social movement, please go to yodigonomas.com. And uh, there is many ways that you can help out. And even if you are willing to tell your story, there's ways that you could do that with our interactive website. Um, For me to find out more about Maria Trusa, you can go to mariatrusa.org. And there you'll be able to listen to my podcast. You'll be able to get the book and and, uh, products. You can order the book. My book is in Amazon in Spanish and English. And uh, it is in Audible in Spanish, and I'm working on the Audible in English uh, to come out before the end of this year. Wonderful. I'll have the links on your podcast profile. Thank you so much again, Maria, for your presence, and we'll talk soon. Okay, Valeria, take care. Bye for now. Blessings. Bye. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Maria Trusa and her work, please visit mariatrusa.org and yodigonomas.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.